Hi there. For several years I've been thinking about building a computer based upon the principle of Rule 110, which I'll explain in a moment. And what I've done is build the computer uh, completely mechanical using a rolling ball mechanism. In this video I'll show my marble machine, which I call the Rule 110 Marble Computer. Before getting into the computer, I'd like to point out that marble machines have been built by others. Some of them demonstrate a computing function, such as this binary counter that I did several years ago. A classic device called the Digicomp 2 could do basic arithmetic. But here's the thing, none of them are general purpose computers that are programmable to do anything you want. The device I built is capable of general computing if it's extended to many more bits. Before I demonstrate the computer, let's take a look at Rule 110. Rule 110 is a system based on a series of binary digits which change according to very simple rules. Each bit changes based only on its own value and the value of its two neighbors. Rule 110 is called the one-dimensional finite state automata, a fancy term for a very simple idea. All right, so let's take a look at the rules. First, we write down the eight binary numbers, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. That's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So now, the rules are for how to map those eight numbers into other digits, and the pattern is 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. So what we're saying is if you have the three bits 0, 0, 0, they become 0. The center bit becomes 0. If you have 0, 0, 1, the center bit becomes 1. 0, 1, 0 becomes 1, and so on. This number turns out to be 110, and that's why it's called Rule 110. So if we take a program like one, one, zero, 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 one, and run the computer, one, one, zero becomes one, one, zero, zero becomes zero, 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 zero becomes zero, 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 one becomes one, and we drop down the two end bits. So this is the state of the computer after running it for one clock cycle. And the cool thing is that this simple set of rules, you can program the Rule 110 computer to do absolutely anything. Rule 110 was discovered by mathematician Steve Wolfram during careful review of the 256 possible similar bit mapping rules. Why 256? because the eight rule bits could be any one of 256 possible choices. So let's see how this works with the actual Rule 110 marble computer. So each of these units is one bit of the computer. So there's four bits in this Rule 110 computer. The balls essentially act as electricity would in a normal computer. Each of these things is called a flipper. When a flipper is to the left, it's a 1. To the right is a 0. The white flippers are actually the state of the main four bits. And these end flippers here represent the, the bits that would be on either end of the computer. So the computer is run by rocking back and forth like this. So before we start up the computer, we have to program it. We do that by setting the bits. Let's program 110001 as in the example I gave. 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. We start the balls at the top like this. Then we clock the computer like this. Now we have 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, as in the example. A guy by the name of Matthew Cook proved that Rule 110 is Turing complete, which means that a Rule 110 based computer 
can compute anything given enough bits and time. To the best of my knowledge, a Rule 110 based computer is currently the simplest known type of computer and as far as I know, this marble machine is the first purely mechanical implementation of a Rule 110 computer. I'm planning to look for a science center, a university, a large office building, or a similar location where I can build a large scale version to help the public learn more about Rule 110. Each bit is made of the base, the ball, four links, and eight flippers with the associated steel pins. The base was machined at a machine shop out of 6061 aluminum and powder coated metallic blue. After designing the computer, I began to wonder how many states it could go through given a selected initial state. So I wrote a program in Python to simulate a Rule 110 computer. The first version of the program was able to analyze up to about 12 bits in a reasonable amount of time. After about 10 optimizations of the algorithm, I got up to 25 bits. To analyze a 25-bit Rule 110 computer without optimization requires computing the states of all 25 bits 33 million times and then counting the length of the program run before it repeats a state starting at each of those 33 million states. So here are the results. A 1-bit computer can step through all two states. A 2-bit computer can step through all four states. A 3-bit version can step through only seven of the eight possible states. A 4-bit version, like the one I built, can step through up to 10 states if started at state 101001. This is what the program looks like while running on the Rule 110 computer for the first few steps. So let's take a look at the larger models from the Python simulator. Notice that the maximum states increases only gradually with the number of bits. For example, a 10-bit version can at most sequence through 63 states before repeating. Empirically, the maximum sequence appears to be about n raised to the power 1.84. I was hoping to find a sudden large jump where some clever program figured out how to generate a much longer sequence but so far such a program has not materialized. Finding such a program might be informative because Cook's proof of completeness used a computation method that is clever but very slow. There might be a better way of programming Rule 110 computers that is faster and uses less bit. Discovering such a method could potentially move Rule 110 into more practical computing domains perhaps ultra nano molecular scale computers or some such future technology. Other possible avenues of exploration include using rules other than 110 and referencing bits other than the immediate neighbor. Feel free to post any comments. Uh, let me know of any developments maybe that you add on to what I've done. Thanks for watching.